his or her uh, uh, experience and uh, with Juliet and Paolo. So I know that there are people who want to, to talk both uh, outside of this room and inside this room. So what, what I am proposing is the following. If anybody from outside of this room wants to make a, an intervention, please uh, write on the chat. We see that uh, you have raised your hand or uh, just you want to, to say something. And uh, otherwise, we, got, we, we will start, uh, however, with people in, uh, in, uh, in the auditor, in the aula dush. Okay, Antonio, I see that Antonio Di Domenico wants to say something, so please. Yeah, actually, I prepared a few slides. I don't know uh, how yes. many people so want to. Okay, ahead. but I, I, I can go fast and present. So just one second. <clears throat> okay, I just want to, okay, just present uh, very uh, quickly. Uh, okay, some personal, I mean, a selection actually of personal memories because okay, <laughs> there are so many. So first of all, uh, as, uh, okay, I would like to, uh, remember, okay, Paolo, when uh, first uh, he came uh, at Sapienza University, the very beginning, because uh, he uh, moved to Frascati in 1991 uh, together with Juliet, and uh, he was appointed uh, in uh, Rome as a professor per Chiara Fama, that was um, really, I mean, a very, a, I would say at that time, exceptional uh, uh, kind of uh, appointment, I mean, uh, only for exceptional uh, uh, people. <laughs> okay, and uh, obviously he deserves. So he started uh, as a professor at the department and the first group to join Chloe uh, when uh, he came in Rome was the group of uh, Guido de Zorzi. We had the expertise in uh, scintillating fibers uh, calorimeters, uh, a couple of experiments at LEP with the group of Giambrini uh, Volazzi. And with that, okay, the group was uh, composed by Cesare Bini, Gianluigi Di Cosimo, myself, Fabio Garufi, and Paolo Gauzzi, and the group te technician Mario Bertino. And in fact, uh, we started working on the calorimeter uh, essentially immediately. And I remember the first time that uh, I met uh, Paolo, that was just uh, during uh, uh, his first visit in our laboratory in Rome. I remember, okay, that uh, Guido and uh, Paolo were, uh, okay, Guido was illust illustrating the laboratory to Paolo. And uh, actually in that laboratory, in that place, uh, some years later, we started the construction of part of the chloe calorimeters. Also, Paolo, okay, as uh, appointed as a professor, started teaching at Sapienza and first uh, at the PhD school. Okay, where uh, uh, Patrizia De Simone, Gianluigi Di Cosimo and myself were uh, just uh, starting attending the lectures and especially his lectures on B-Physics as, as a series of lectures in the course of uh, uh, experimental uh, methods in particle physics held by uh, Bruno Giorgio, Borgia. I remember that uh, Paolo's, I mean, the, the main concern of the other students that were not used to, <laughs> to I mean, uh, getting in contact with with Paolo was the fact that uh, as uh, I imagine he was uh, just coming from uh, US uh, okay was just arrived uh, in Italy was the, the fact that uh, during uh, teaching he was unconsciously switching between Italian and English and uh, uh, and, and vice versa and uh, this constituted uh, at that time I mean 30 years ago uh, I mean some difficulties for some of the students. Uh, a couple of years later, so uh, we had actually the first three PhD theses uh, in Chloe, uh, the, I mean, the, sorry, in Sapienza, dedicated to Chloe with uh, that were uh, the, 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 the three that uh, our, our three uh, theses, Patrizia, Gianluigi and myself. 
uh, now, okay, I would like just to make very, very, very few, okay, very personal uh, comments. One was that the subject of my PhD work was mainly on the electromagnetic calorimeter on the design, etc. But uh, okay, was not sufficient for uh, I mean making uh, I mean uh, the, the 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 full work of the PhD for the PhD thesis. So some uh, less technical uh, subject should be included. I remember uh, part of my uh, supervisor to have discussed this issue with Paolo a couple of times with him. Uh, really strongly suggesting me to choose uh, CP violation epsilon prime over epsilon as a subject, obviously linked, for instance, K-Leong in pi zero pi zero, and uh, avoiding, uh, I mean, a less uh, firm, let's say, subjects like test on quantum foundations, uh, or the foundations of quantum mechanics. But I was stubbornly insisting on, on this subject. And uh, how wise was the Paolo's suggestion, I realized sometime later, because in fact, I had problems with my referee of the PhD. And in fact, the second referee is was appointed Giancarlo Girardi was uh, one of the many experts in the field that actually that I was criticizing his his his, his, his proposal. So my 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 admission uh, the admission my thesis was at risk. But however, in the end, I was uh, su uh, successful in the sense that I went to discuss with Girardi, and finally, I, I mean, he I convinced him that uh, my test uh, my, my proposal was right and then I published and also I remember Paolo helping me uh, sometime after in better specifying I mean better presenting I mean this test to the scientific community. Another episode is uh, the workshop in uh, uh, some, some years uh, uh, later, the workshop in Alghero, when I was asked to present something about uh, neutral Keon interferometry, the status of uh, this uh, work in, uh, in CLOE. And I remember that at that, that time we had this first uh, interference plot that was made by Mario and uh, Alexei Sibidanov, Mario Antonelli. And I spent a good fraction of this, uh, okay. Oh, part of the summer, I mean, trying to, <laughs> to extract some information from this plot. However, uh, uh, okay, I, I realized that uh, actually we were able to put uh, a limit on uh, some parameters, on some decoherence parameters, uh, uh, actually five orders of magnitude better than the CP layer. I, I, I realized that this was not a mistake, but just a feature of our system. I, I remember immediately when to discuss this with Paolo and I was expecting him skeptical about this, but finally, I mean, his first reaction was not enthusiastic, okay, <laughs> we know, but nice, carino. Okay, and uh, I had in fact, uh, okay, and then uh, permission to present this uh, very preliminary result. And then uh, this was the starting point for future, uh, for a future uh, publication on this issue. And uh, in March, 2006, uh, I uh, organized a workshop in Frascati on these uh, neutral count uh, interferometry on these issues. And uh, I think that uh, could be, Nice to hear uh, Paolo's uh, comment about testing quantum mechanics because I asked him to chair the first session. Hey, here it is. I don't know if uh, you can hear. Can you hear? Yes. We cannot hear you. We cannot hear the. Uh, you didn't hear? No. 
Ah, it's a pity. Uh, okay, maybe you you can run. Ti dovresti forse levare le cuffie, eh? yes. mi dicono. Okay. Let me see. We still don't hear anything. Okay. Uh, Antonio, non ti sentiamo neanche più a te adesso, eh? No, no, we see you, but we cannot hear you anymore. No, no. So, okay, so um, I mean, we have a problem with Antonio apparently. So I think that we can move to the next uh, uh, speaker that is uh, Professor Mannelli from Pisa. So I think he wants to say, say he wants to say something about the prehistoric age of. Uh... So Italo, please. Okay. I will try yes. to, to share a few transparency if it's around me. Sure. Oh. You can see the transparency, I suppose. Yes. And uh, as the title says, I'm referring to a period that uh, is prehistoric uh, rather than uh, starting uh, in the 90s. Uh, uh, my recollection starts uh, in uh, 1953. In the fall of 1953, I had just gone through uh, the competition to enter the Scuola Normale, and I met uh, 
Paolo, who was uh, a couple of years ahead of me. He was a third year student uh, at the Scuola Normale and uh, at uh, the Department of Physics uh, of Pisa University, but uh, he had the same age as me. Strange enough, but that was uh, was the truth. And uh, later on, I came to know part of his family, and in particular, his brother, his two brothers, and his sisters. And uh, he came really from a very distinguished uh, family in the field of physics uh, because uh, his father was teaching physics. Uh, uh, the uh, military naval academy in Livorno, and the mother, I believe, was also a teacher. But uh, uh, all uh, of the four Franzini brother and sister uh, gained a mission at the Scuola Normale, which I think is, is, is very, very unusual. Uh, one of them was a doctor in medicine, another one uh, was a distinguished biologist, uh, and uh, the youngest one of them was uh, uh, a mineralogist of uh, international fame. Okay, now let me go to my personal, if I, okay. Uh, funny enough, uh, uh, in uh, Paolo and I share a common first publication. He got his degree two years ahead of me, but uh, uh, evidently his I don't remember what exactly was the subject of his thesis. I'm sure that he got uh, his thesis with Marcello Conversi, as later on I did it myself. But uh, this uh, first publication together uh, is, rather, is rather unusual. It's rather unusual because, uh, first of all, it had a character which hit me. Uh, it had the, the, the right kind uh, of question to be asked, uh, and it deserved uh, a correct answer. And this was the case. Uh, at the time, uh, in 57, it was only a year since uh, discovery of parity non conservation in the beta decays of. Uh, uh, of, of the cobalt uh, and also uh, in the decay of the muon and, and the pion, uh, but uh, uh, parity non conservations have been observed only in situations where in the final states uh, there were neutrinos. And so the, the question that uh, T.D. Lee himself asked uh, was uh, uh, where uh, the property of parity violation intrinsically uh, uh, bound to the, to the neutrino or where the uh, manifestation of a more general weak interaction uh, properties. And the result uh, was that indeed it was uh, a weak interaction property independently of the neutrino at least uh, in the decay of Landas, uh, uh, there were no neutrinos present, uh, but nevertheless, uh, there was clear non-parity conservation. And uh, 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 Jack Steinberger, who had promoted the analysis uh, of the events taken at Brookhaven, which we analyzed in Pisa at the same time as other people uh, from Bologna, from uh, um, Brookhaven, from, uh, <coughs> from Michigan, and from Columbia, 
uh, and we came to the conclusion, as I said, that uh, parity was a general property of the weak interaction, at least uh, uh, of, of the strange particles, the case. And uh, it came out uh, a publication with 19 authors uh, from Palm Institution, but uh, the peculiarity, which I don't know whether it is unique or not, uh, uh, is that uh, of the 19 authors, four of them got the Nobel Prize. Mr. Glazer, who was the inventor of the Babo Cheba, Mr. Pearl, who found and uh, discovered the Tau, Mr. Schwartz and Mr. Steinberger, who were essential for uh, extracting uh, the fact that uh, the neutrino carried the flipper as he did the experiment uh, in Brookhaven. But uh, uh, let's say after uh, the, this publication, uh, Paolo, together with another uh, three people from, from Pisa, uh, was uh, taking note that uh, in Frascati something uh, uh, very unusual was happening, that is uh, uh, the electron synchrotron uh, was going to be uh, inaugurated. And uh, strangely enough, uh, uh, in thinking about what could be measured uh, by somebody with the extremely poor experimental means as we had in PISA at, at the time, uh, we have come out uh, with, a, with a coherent proposal. Maybe the physics motivation was not so strong, but uh, from the point of view of uh, having an idea of an experiment, uh, uh, deciding which detector would be particularly useful in view of measuring what we had uh, uh, thought about, uh, carrying out uh, uh, the uh, data taking and then the analysis and publishing the results uh, uh, was uh, a, a unique occasion, uh, an occasion which uh, I'm afraid uh, our young colleagues nowadays uh, means entirely. And <laughs> I must say it was quite orthogonal to the perspective of uh, engaging 35 years uh, in view of expecting, uh, as it was mentioned this morning more than once, uh, to get uh, uh, a significant uh, new, new, new results. Uh, the experiment uh, aimed at something a bit uh, peculiar. Uh, and then that was uh, to measure the polarization of the recoil proton from pi zero photoprotection. And uh, uh, they, an, an object that at the time was a unique possibility, to offer a unique possibility to do that, uh, was uh, uh, a bubble chamber. But it had to be a special type of a bubble chamber. Uh, with a re rapid uh, cycling because uh, the electron synchrotron uh, was uh, uh, producing a beam uh, 20 times a second. Now, 20 times a second is a frequency which is really too high for a bubble chamber, but um, we could build and operate reliably a small bubble chamber uh, that could be activated five times a second. And uh, uh, it was filled with a, a mixture of propane uh, in which uh, ethane, which is much more volatile than propane, was dissolved uh, in such a way that uh, when expanded, uh, the, the mixture was uh, super saturated with the gaseous uh, ethane. And uh, uh, normally one would have preferred bubble chamber uh, containing uh, hydrogen, 
but that would have been well beyond our means because uh, operating at 20 Kelvin at the time for us was, uh, was impossible. Actually, with this uh, uh, possibility of uh, uh, producing uh, an active mean uh, in which to observe uh, particle trajectories by this uh, solution of ethane in propane, uh, we had uh, an idea of uh, possibility to run without uh, being worried about too much about safety and other considerations because uh, while pure propane require 50 Celsius, uh, 50, 55 Celsius, uh, with this uh, choosing the proper uh, pressure of the ethane, we could run and stabilize the temperature of this bubble chamber uh, uh, with the Frascati water supply, 17 centigrade. <laughs> Now, uh, the chamber was uh, active, uh, but uh, not at every expansion. There was, of course, uh, a proton gently going inside and uh, producing a scattering on the uh, atoms of carbon, on the nuclei of carbon. And this scattering was known uh, to be sensitive to the transfer polarization of the proton. That is the probability of being scattered right versus the probability of scattered left uh, relative to the normal of the, plan, of the plane defined by the beam and the particle trajectory. Uh, uh, the different probability uh, would be a measure of the polarization of the proton. And, uh, the bubble chamber also provided particle identification in addition to nuclear ion, which to scatter the insensitive to the polarization of the incoming proton, because uh, we could uh, identify that the particle was really a proton uh, by the fact that uh, the density of the bubbles along the trajectory uh, photographed in the bubble chamber was uh, higher than for minimum ionizing particle. And uh, <clears throat> the fact that uh, the, uh, what was hit was not uh, a proton, but was a, a nucleon of carbon was uh, proved by the fact that there was no visible recoil. Uh, and so we, 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 we had a, this possibility of uh, having uh, a clean, although very low statistics uh, uh, situation. And uh, we were only four, four people in all, uh, of which uh, two had just got their degree one year before, and uh, uh, Paolo and uh, Luciano Bertanza were the, the, senior, the senior person. And we were very well received at Frascati without much uh, uh, bureaucracy at all at the time. And uh, our tiny group uh, uh, and that uh, uh, had no, um, let's say, direct contribution by personnel of, of, the, of the laboratory, except uh, for providing, of course, uh, the working of the electron synchrotron, uh, had the opportunity to, uh, to, to act uh, as host uh, from some visitor of the laboratory, like uh, Vance Peterson from Hawaii, Peter Stoker from, from South Africa. And uh, Paolo was an expert in electronics. And at the time, uh, it was still uh, based on vacuum tubes. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember it can give you a flavor of the situation at the time, still, uh, in, at least in the phase of physics, uh, uh, close to the end of the war. Uh, and uh, the detail is that uh, uh, Paolo 
realized that he could make a specially fast uh, coincidence uh, um, to uh, for for to activate uh, the flash of the bubble chamber uh, by using a special pen tool uh, which had an enhanced performance uh, because uh, the last part one uh, electrode was covered with an efficient secondary emission method. So as far as I know, this uh, was a rather unique uh, technique uh, and uh, the pen tool uh, had been recuperated by ARAL, an ARAL an agency that uh, was used to uh, extract uh, from uh, uh, residual instruments uh, from the world useful uh, electronics. Uh, and uh, some of these electronics was uh, marked in red because uh, in principle, they were supposed to house the, an explosive charge in case that uh, you try to extract uh, the, the secret of what uh, it, it contained. And so at, at the time, uh, it was possible for a small group like that to initiate a career as an experimental physicist uh, uh, by being admitted to work in parallel to other experiments uh, at uh, uh, a place uh, which was uh, the one where the first uh, ever uh, accelerator at the level of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, at, the, at, at the level of more than, than a few mev, I suppose, uh, uh, that was uh, first built uh, in Italy and at, at the time this, uh, uh, electron synchrotron was actually of interest even for Americans. And I remember, uh, for instance, Bob Wilson, who later on became uh, the director of Fermilab, uh, who was working at Cornell at the time, uh, and uh, he had been collaborated with the team of uh, Salvini and company who had built uh, the, uh, the, the, the synchrotron. And, uh, but uh, by the end uh, of 1961, uh, the group had dissolved. Uh, Bertanza had gone to Brukeva, Paolo had gone to Nevis and Columbia, and he stayed there and until he came back uh, to Rome. And Vittorio Silvestrini, who was uh, the other one of the team, uh, had accepted. Uh, uh, that position at Frascati, and I myself was on the way to MIT. So that was uh, the end of working together. And in fact, as far as I know, in fact, no, these four people never worked with each other later on, but that uh, was a beginning that uh, uh, it is remembered, I'm sure. Uh, with uh, some nostalgia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is really, we didn't, I mean, I personally didn't know this, this story, actually. Thank you. I, I imagine, I imagine it was forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> it was too early. So is anybody else that wants to say something here in the in the room? I don't know. Eric, you, you wanted to say something? I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
OK, pardon. I would like to, uh, let's say a few, I would like just to say a few words. Am I sharing? I guess so. I don't know. Thank you. Where are they? Maybe two more. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Sorry, can you see now the, uh, the screen? Okay. Okay. So I just wanted uh, just to say a few words uh, to remember Paolo and uh, Juliet and um, from the experience that I had as one of the uh, young uh, scientists that were in some way shaped by the uh, marvelous and unique Chloe experience that we had here at the LNF. And I had the opportunity and the privilege to be part of this uh, uh, adventure. So I started as a um, diploma student actually, uh, working uh, on what uh, Juliet used to call the modern giant, uh, so the Chloe chamber. And uh, at that time, uh, um, I remember the first time I met uh, both Paolo and Juliet was during one of the uh, Drift Chamber uh, uh, meetings because we were just attending the uh, uh, specific meetings at the time. And uh, I remember some of us, I was together with Klitsa that you can see uh, in, this, uh, in this picture here, and also the other diploma student. Uh, we were uh, all diploma students of uh, um, Franco Lacava, Filippo Gerardini, and Cesare Bacci. So it was our first time here at LNF, and it would have been our first time to meet Paolo Franzini. <laughs> so we were all a bit scared because of uh, what everybody used to say, that he was uh, uh, an outstanding physicist, uh, that, uh, uh, that it was uh, kind of uh, uh, difficult then to interact with him. So I remember uh, Franco Lacava telling us, yes, he's an outstanding physicist, but uh, don't be scared, don't be shy. If you have to say something, if you want to tell something, tell him something, just do it. Right away, he's, he's a researcher, he's a physicist, so just behave, act like yourself. So this is the first thing that, and that I remember about uh, meeting, uh, meeting them. And uh, uh, then this is a, a picture um, that uh, Juliet uh, took, actually. I think Juliet or Paolo, one of the two, uh, when we were uh, stringing the, uh, uh, the rift chamber. Um, uh, many of us were 24 seven <laughs> in the Chloe Confer room that you can see here. So this, is, this was our office. And uh, we were, uh, some of us were stringing, uh, some of us uh, were uh, performing the uh, uh, checks as uh, Ludo was uh, saying uh, this morning quite nicely. And Paolo and Juliet uh, um, were, um, taking these daily rounds and uh, uh, included in their daily rounds was also checking the number of the strong wires. Uh, this is a, a memory that uh, Gianni Bencivenni uh, told me about because uh, unfortunately he cannot be here today. So he told me, just please tell them uh, a few words uh, from me, tell uh, everybody a few words from me. So uh, he, uh, he told me that uh, exactly, Paolo and Juliet would every day uh, come to the uh, control room and uh, uh, check the number of strong wires. And uh, they were uh, uh, most of the time uh, happy, of course. Um, and they were taking pictures uh, uh, at each step, as you can see, and everybody remembers uh, uh, that they had pictures for uh, everything. Every moment uh, was uh, uh, frozen in these, uh, uh, in these pictures. And um, Gianni told me that it was his uh, uh, first time uh, uh, as a coordinator. It, it was his first uh, um, role as a responsible uh, uh, the construction of the brief chamber. So of course, uh, 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 he was uh, helped a lot uh, by the, the discussions uh, with, uh, with Paolo. But also Gianni told me that uh, Paolo and also some other colleagues were, were a bit skeptical about uh, the uh, uh, about whether the drift chamber uh, would have worked or not at the end. <laughs> so uh, Gianni told me that, uh, that at the end, uh, uh, he was relieved when we uh, finally took the first cosmic rays and indeed the drift chamber saw them. So everybody was happy, uh, Paolo was happy. So, uh, so being part of this uh, incredible challenge uh, uh, as the construction of uh, the uh, uh, 
a large, uh, largest ever uh, drift chamber uh, built was, uh, was really unique for me, for Barbara, for, for a lot of us. So we were young, uh, but uh, we were also <clears throat> already having, uh, uh, taking great responsibilities because uh, um, both Paolo and Juliet were constantly encouraging young members to get up, speak up, and also take a leading role. So I have reported here a few uh, um, emails. Uh, this was the first time that uh, uh, myself and Roberto Versace, that I don't know if uh, is uh, with us because uh, he just got uh, under a storm. So he's uh, totally, <laughs> he's trying to recover at home. Um, so here I reported uh, the, uh, the email that uh, Roberto and myself were asked by Juliet to send to Gigi Rolandi. At the time, Gigi Rolandi was the editor of uh, PLB. And so uh, to show you uh, how uh, trustful they were, both Paolo and Juliet, uh, she asked us to send directly the email to Gigi without passing through anybody, anyone. <clears throat> so uh, she cross-checked with us the email. And so I, uh, I was, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I felt happy when I came back to this, uh, to this email and I read it because uh, I would like to read it to you. It's, uh, it says, dear Gigi, and then Professor Rolandi in brackets, we are two members of the CLOI collaboration who have been slaving over the measurement of the absolute branching ratio of k mu nu dk. And um, Juliet wanted us to, uh, to write that we, uh, we were, uh, uh, that we have been slaving. So she, she, she wanted that. She told us, you have to, read, uh, to, to write it down. We said, okay, we are going to do it. Then we are proud and happy to achieve an unprecedented accuracy in this measurement, which made Professor Marciano very happy because it enabled him to use it to obtain an independent measurement of the CKM matrix element BUS. After much pressure from our senior advisor, Juliet Licrondini, we are respectfully submitting the result to be published in your physics letters. We are, of course, the corresponding authors of the article that we are submitting. Please do not hesitate to contact us for any questions. So we were directly uh, um, interacting with, uh, with Gigi. And uh, as you can see here in this other email, uh, we were receiving uh, uh, the, uh, the answers from Gigi, and then we would submit them to uh, Juliet and Paolo. Then we would uh, uh, prepare the answers for the comments coming from the referee, then uh, send them directly to Juliet and Paolo, discuss them with uh, uh, discuss the, uh, the answers with them, and then send them to Gigi. So I think this, uh, uh, this is, was uh, uh, one of the uh, several teaching moments uh, that I had uh, with, uh, with them, both with uh, uh, Paolo and, uh, and Juliet. I remember also um, preparing uh, the uh, uh, talks for the scientific committee and uh, uh, going back to the previous picture, this picture here, actually, um, Juliet uh, uh, took it. And uh, I remember that uh, at a certain point, uh, uh, we told her that uh, uh, both me and Clizia uh, were, uh, we've been asked to, to give a report at the journal club because we, are, we were um, taking our PhD. So, uh, and oh, actually we were skipping several lectures of the PhD uh, course because we had to be in the control room. So she knew that uh, we had to give this, uh, this report, this presentation, this talk at the, uh, um, at the journal club. And so she came to my office uh, bringing this picture and uh, telling uh, me, both me and uh, Clizia, here's, this is for you. You can show all your uh, PhD uh, fellow students and fellow uh, uh, colleagues what you are doing actually during, during, during the day. So they can understand that you cannot attend all the lectures every day. And so she prepared them. Uh, uh, they were, of course, uh, at the time we didn't have a PowerPoint and nothing. So they were just printed on a, a transparency on a slide. And I still have it, so that's uh, something uh, uh, that I wanted to share, you, to share with you. So I would like just to leave you with uh, uh, this uh, uh, cloud tag that I prepared with uh, some of the uh, uh, words, adjectives, uh, uh, something to, to remind them uh, because uh, they were really into mentoring. They were, some, uh, they were uh, really uh, some uh, uh, great teachers. They had their ways, of course, we all, we all know them. But uh, I think what they taught us uh, for sure is to be proud. We were all proud to be part of a great team, a big team, a family, a family which was working 
all together. We had, of course, our discussions, but when we were at home, we had discussions. When we were going and when we were attending conferences, uh, it, it was just like having just one voice. It was Chloe talking. We were Chloe in the, in the outside. They were super leaders. I still can hear uh, Juliet coming to my office, uh, <clears throat> calling me Pussycat. Do you know Pussycat, come here, I have this for you. And uh, uh, concerning, she was tireless in uh, putting all the pieces together of the collaboration. She was having this daily rounds. Uh, she would walk through the corridors, uh, uh, going back and forth into each office, asking uh, how the analysis was going, uh, how everything was going, if you were feeling good, if you had some personal problems. She was really uh, always there. And Paolo, uh, Paolo was intense. Paolo wanted also always to, uh, to give you uh, the, uh, uh, the big picture, uh, to, uh, um, to let you know that uh, uh, the orders of magnitude were important, but not, not only the, uh, um, uh, the specific, uh, uh, the one specific aspect. Uh, you had to know everything and uh, that's all. So I'm proud uh, to be part of this uh, legacy as you all are. Okay. Okay, let's see whether it works. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I don't know if uh, you you heard. Uh, ah, yes, please, because probably the, the microphone was disactivated. Ma era già condiviso. Do I have, okay, I stop sharing or try to play again. Antonio. Sì. Noi prima lo abbiamo trasmesso il, il famoso. Ok, posso, posso andare avanti quindi. Ok, sì, vai avanti. Ok. So, okay, so you <laughs> probably would be nice to upload uh, somewhere uh, this, this video could be, could be nice to, to hear uh, his point of view about testing quantum mechanics. Just uh, the last uh, comment I would like to say about Juliet, I was appointed uh, as a secretary of the policy board uh, of Chloe Podrick board that was uh, chaired by Juliet and Giorgio Capone. And for me was uh, really a very intense uh, and interesting experience in the management of an experiment. And uh, okay, I learned a lot from Juliet uh, about policy in a broad sense. And also he had a, a slight privilege of a viewpoint to observe uh, Paolo and Juliet as couple, just because I was more, um, frequently in their office, I mean, than uh, uh, other people. So uh, as uh, 
concluding remarks, I would like to say that uh, uh, for sure, uh, without uh, okay, Paolo, uh, okay, and Juliet deserve infinite gratitude. I mean, uh, for uh, I mean the the, the we, we, uh, okay of the cloico two collaboration because this is obvious. Uh, uh, okay, has been mentioned this morning, but th this uh, is uh, worth to be reminded that uh, obviously, uh, especially at the beginning, they they contributed the, to the design of the upgrade of the detector and uh, was also okay it's quite uh, heavy enterprise and uh, as a final thought let me say one thing i see that uh, in, uh, the paula uh, is uh, connected I, I would like to to say hello to 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 her and uh, this final thought is just uh, okay just uh, a this consideration that I remember when uh, um, everybody was in the old uh, uh, building at the NEA, and I remember the office of Paul and Juliet there. And uh, when uh, finally was uh, ready the, the, the new building uh, at, the, at the ENFN side, at the other side of the, of, of the street, all researchers moved there and uh, I noticed that finally, okay, they had uh, uh, assigned two separate adjacent offices finally, okay, so more space for them. And I was very happy for them and what a surprise when I saw the wall uh, dividing their office the removed and again them sharing a single bigger office. This is really Okay, uh, let me say no barriers for uh, their great love, because I think that uh, above all was a, a couple, uh, really a, 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 a bright example. Okay, okay, of uh, of uh, of love and uh, uh, okay, all life. So thank you very much for for uh, teaching us so a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much, Antonio. So is anybody, is there anybody else wants to add something about uh, their experience? Yes, very good. Ah, okay, so, okay, so. Okay. If you first find, uh, uh, so I'm going to read a uh, uh, few uh, words that Roberto Versace shared uh, with me. Uh, as I was telling uh, Fabio, uh, he cannot uh, speak right now. Um, so from Roberto Versace, I got to know Paolo and Juliet relatively late in their career. At first to me, they were a sort of weird <laughs> mythological creatures living in their own office who were coming out only on a specific occasion to feast on the corpse of young doctoral students. I'm joking, of course, but it's true they had an intimidating aura. Even though many older than me told me that they had, they had actually softened with time. Once a younger colleague of mine recounted to me his recollection of the first internal meeting he attended. The time of the meeting had passed. Everyone was waiting for something. Then these two old persons with Asian facial features arrived. It's true that somehow Paolo looked a bit Asian. I guess they must have had such a close relation for that to happen. He like a God, she like his priestess. He made some sharp remarks nobody dared to contradict. I noticed his thumb was missing. I wondered where the hell had I arrived? But such respect was well-deserved. Paolo was a brilliant physicist with a bright mind, even I could see. I am not going to elaborate on this, as I am sure many have already told you countless stories to prove it. It's true that from a young physicist's perspective, to face someone able to spot every mistake one could have made was intimidating. And one really had to have done a, great, a good job and needed to be able to stand their own ground. 
Nevertheless, these experiences proved useful to me. I grew a thick skin and no meeting or conference has scared me as much ever since. I remember the fear of Paolo I had at my first blessing meeting, the KMU2 paper that then we wrote and spoke with uh, Gigi. Um, although I have to say that on that occasion, on a specific point, he had it wrong and Giorgio Capon had it right, but Giorgio, for the real gentleman he is, let it go. Ciao Giorgio, I miss you. What Paolo, was more distant, while Paolo was more distant to me, Juliet was more a regular presence during my Frascati days, hovering around the corridors, checking with her watchful eye that the army was running smoothly. I was lucky. I think she liked me. Uh, she, uh, sorry, I just lost my piece. <laughs> I was lucky. I think she liked me. She always, uh, she was always very nice to me. I know that her comments sounded almost pointless to many, just focusing on details. Please don't use yellow on your slides. That was also Paolo, actually, on your slides. It's unreadable if that font is too small. But dear me, she had a point because a sloppy presentation gives the audience the idea of a sloppy work. If you're not able to prepare with the care a few slides, how much care could you have, could you have put in your scientific work? This is a sort of unconscious bias that I am aware I have. One could, guard, could argue that I have it because of her. Fair point too, but I think her, points, her point counts more. Many years have passed, and whenever I see a presentation with yellow text and fonts too small to be read, I'm glad that she taught me the importance of these details. I think of her, and I think of her with a lot of affection. Farewell, Paula and Judith, farewell. Quello vogliamo andare a casa. Andiamo allora. Thank you, Erika. Thank you, Roberto, for these very nice words. Is anybody else that wants to add something? I think that we should, uh, besides all, 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 all the, I mean, I mean, we have talked about uh, the teaching, uh, the, the, the mentoring, uh, and the, let's say the, the, the professional aspects of uh, uh, Juliet and Paolo, we should also remind uh, their human uh, uh, side. Uh, let, let's, let me say more of Juliet than on Paolo. Paolo was uh, rather tight, shy in a sense. Juliet was more uh, interested in our personal life. Uh, I, I personally re remember with, with love, I want to say, how, how much uh, fond was she with uh, my son. Uh, and I have a picture of this. So you, I hope you see this. So every, for several years, every year, when uh, at the, my son's birthday, uh, she, she gave him uh, a present, as a present, his favorite uh, chocolate uh, uh, cake, so the Sager Torte. So this is his 14th birthday, I assume. I'm not very good in taking pictures, but this is one that I have. Uh, and. Uh, and uh, she, now he's, uh, he's uh, a young man, and I mean it's, uh, uh, and she's, she's, he still remembers her with, uh, with a lot of, of affection and love. So thank you, Juliet, also for that. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. I think it's over. Uh, we have a, a small coffee outside, and thank you for everybody who has participated to this uh, to this event and for uh, for uh, having been here both personally and uh, on the on on the internet. Thank you, Paola, for being with us again. And uh, we hope to see you here some sometimes in the future. Thank you.